So how to play your draws? I believe it all comes to three different scenarios in live poker, which is first, if you have range advantage, second, if you don't have range advantage, and third, if your opponent doesn't even know what range advantage is, because you will play against people that don't know what range advantage is. So versus those players that doesn't know, what you should ask yourself is, will this guy overfold to me? Will this guy fold a lot? if I decide to be aggressive? Because if the answer is yes, you should be aggressive. And if the answer is no, you should think about, man, do I have implied odds here enough to just call and realize my equity seeing the turn or seeing the river? Now, if you do have range advantage, then what I recommend you to do is to be really aggressive and to really be thoughtful about what sizing you will, you will make. Because let's say you have a open ender and flush draw but your flush draw is a jack high flush draw okay so let's say a situation ace eight nine board with two hearts you have 10 jack of hearts and let's say you have range advantage so you want to become aggressive but there is still he can still have a queen high flush draw a king high flush draw and an ace high flush draw which would also be a pair in this case so one thing you should avoid is to be aggressive and to make a sizing that you will get called by a flush draw that is better than yours. Because then you will be crushed. Because what, what, what passed through my head when I become aggressive and I have a flush draw or an open ender or two overs and open ender, whatever. It passed through my head is that I wanna make this guy fold. But if he calls, I still have 12 outs. So 12 outs in the turn and river, that's roughly 46% of chance of getting there. So man, 46% is pretty much a flip. Like it's fine, you know, like in the end, you are trying to make him fold, okay. So you are being aggressive, you are putting pressure to make him fold. But if he calls, you're not so bad in equity, so that's fine. But one thing you should be careful with is on being aggressive and get called by hands that are crushing you, such as a bigger flush draw than yours, because then you would be crushed and that's what you want to avoid. And you can avoid that maybe by check raising way bigger so the flush draw doesn't have odds enough to call, let's say like that. Does it make sense? That makes sense, yeah. So when you don't have range advantage though, uh, you're probably familiar with implied odds that are not, implied odds are not only your odds in terms of the pot, but is your odds in terms of the pot plus the odds that you might extract value if you hit your cards. So for example, someone bets 100, the pot has 200, and someone bets 100. So now there's 300 in the pot. You gotta call 100 for a pot that has 300. Okay, those are your odds, but there is still implied odds of maybe you hitting your flush, you're hitting your straight draw, you're hitting your card, and then you can extract more money, more value from this guy. You just don't know exactly how much will you extract, but you know that you will extract in average, let's say you make an account in your head that you're on the turn and you're calling 100 for a pot that has 300. And if you hit your flush, you're gonna bet 75% of the pot. So you're gonna bet 300. And when you bet 300, you're gonna get called 50% of the times. So 50% of 300 is 150. So you are calling 100 for a pot that has 300 and if you hit your cards, you still have implied odds of 150 more because of the calculation we just made here. Does it make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So those are the things that you should be aware of when you are with a flush draw, with a straight draw. If let's say he's the aggressor, so you just call in the big, someone open raises from cutoff, you call in the big blind and you got open ender and two overs. Let's say a, bo a board that comes eight, nine, three, and you have 10 jack now, okay? And then you check, he C bets. Ace, nine, three, this board favors your range. You got a lot of eight, nine, nine, 10, six, seven, 10 jack. That is what you have at the moment. You got, op you got open ender and you got two overs as well because the jack 10 are overs. So you still have six out of those overs if, if you're not playing versus a, a over pair. Okay, so you got range advantage in this situation you got open ender and you got two overs. So you are in a good shape, you know? You are in a good shape. You are in a great shape even versus ace queen 
Ace King, like your favorite versus those hands. You are in a great shape. You are in a good versus Ace Nine. You are in a good shape. You're playing for the Jack, for the Ten, for the Seven, for the Queen. You're you're playing for many outs. So what do you want to do in this situation? It makes a lot of sense for you to check raise and for you to put pressure on him because it it, it you have range advantage because you have two overs and open ender and because this flop will not favor his range so much. Now. As there's no flush draw, you won't have to worry about that thing of not getting caught with a better flush than yours, and etc. But even then, you make this question, man, is this guy too tight? And do I think he has a lot of over pairs in his range right now? Oftentimes, you won't think that because he opened rates from the cutoff. So his range is like 30% of the deck. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad, not so good hands in his range. Of course, there is aces, there is kings, there is queens, there is jacks, there is tens. Yeah, tens and jacks are less likely because you have a ten and a jack. So it makes it very less likely for him to have ten and jack. He could have, but in, in, in a situation like that, I believe it makes a lot of sense for you to check raise big and try to, to put pressure on him. Because when you're playing draws, basically what you're trying to do is to make him fold, but in case he calls, you still have a lot of outs, so it's fine, you know? So those are the three main situations in live poker, at least that I saw myself. When I have range advantage, when I don't have range advantage, and when the guy doesn't even know what range advantage is, because you don't wanna be playing four levels above the guy that you're playing against. You wanna be one or two levels above from him, so you can really exploit his tendencies. But if you're thinking about, oh, this board favors my range and this guy is supposed to be folding really often here and blah, blah, blah. And then the guy just know he has top pair and he's not gonna fold to you because you're an aggressive dude. Then you're just using the wrong, the wrong reasons why you're doing what you're doing. Because you're not adapting your game to the player you're playing against. You're just thinking just about your strategy instead of adapting your strategy to the weakness of your opponents that in 1-3, 1-2, most of the players are not going to be good players. So many of those players are not going to have an idea of range advantage, nut advantage, of sizing, of how, how often should he see bats, and etc. And, and, and one, one good thing to say, most players are fearful of losing money. So usually, versus worse players, it will make a lot of sense with your draws to check raise big and put pressure on them because mo most likely they will overfold and you will win the pot. And when they call, you will still have 35% equity, 40% equity, 46% equity, 50% equity. Man, if you have a flush draw and two overs, that's 15 outs. 15 outs twice is more than 50%. 15 outs in the turning river is more than 50% of chance. So even if he calls, even if he calls, many times you will still be ahead in equity. So this play is highly profitable because you're putting pressure to win the pot. So let's say the pot has $150. You're betting 350, you're going all in. You're going all in for 400 in a pot that has 150, okay? If he, if he folds, you get 150 clean. If he calls, you have 52% equity. So it does, in a situation like that, it doesn't matter what he does, you're gonna make more money. Like, you, you, you see, I, I don't have a calculator to calculate what is better, him to fold or him to call with you with 52% equity in a hand like that. But both cases are profitable. Both, both cases are fine, you know? Yeah. One thing, when I'm at the table, I heard that a lot. People, people say I bet big. People say I put pressure. And that becomes good for two reasons. First, I put pressure, so people will tend to fold a little bit more. And the other reason, which is as important as the first one, is when I actually have a good hand, I will be able to extract a lot because I usually put a lot of pressure. So I, 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 I just have to keep doing what I already do, which is applying pressure, but now I have a great hand, you know? Yeah. And that goes, that goes with what you said about guts. You trust your guts. Man, what you sent me here, I loved it. Like, you, you, I, I really believe you are profitable in the game you're playing and you are growing towards the direction of being even better and better and better. And man, that's what, that's what you want and you're doing great, man.